my beautiful wife, Pastor Rachel Jenkins. Come on, give God a good God bless you as she comes to minister the word today. God bless you. Come on, let's continue to give God praise. I say, come on, let's continue to give God praise. I say, because God is worthy. I say, God is worthy to be praised. I say, God is worthy to be praised. Despite what it looks like, I say, God is worthy. Despite what has happened, I say, God is worthy. He is our future. <laughs> he is our past. He is our right now. We bless him this morning. God, we thank you. I said, God, we thank you. I said, God, we bless you because you are worthy this morning. We glorify you. We magnify you because you are our king this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you because he is holy. He is peace. Waymaker. <laughs> he is authority. He is knowledge. He is kind. He is passionate. He is all knowing. He is all good. And we love him this morning. You may be seated in his presence. I feel good this morning. I feel good. Jesus, could you tap that? Thank you. I said, God is good. Not just because it's the season of Thanksgiving. We should have a heart of Thanksgiving continually. Therefore, I don't have to work it up when it comes down to Thanksgiving and I got to put on a smile and I got to get ready for people. No, I already have a heart of Thanksgiving because I know who he is and what he has done. And he is my heart. He is my, ooh, he is my heart. And I'm extremely grateful to him this morning. So welcome back, everyone. We praise God for the opportunity of rest. Uh, we thank him. We count it a privilege to have an opportunity of rest. So I don't take rest lightly. It is needed. Um, we weren't in denial. Pastor Marcus and I just got to a point where we were just like, well, what are we going to do? You know what? I, I don't want to think about it. My husband wanted to say, I want to see mountains. Okay. So <laughs> let's just get on the road so he can go and see, see mountains and the area where we ended up, I was joking with the Lord in the back. I said, man, I said, anybody ever seen the movie Deliverance? The movie was in 1970. I said, man, this look like Deliverance out here. We don't need to be. Let's see what we got to see. <laughs> and let's keep it rolling. But it was, I thank God for uh, his rest. And to see everybody's faces and via uh, internet, we thank God for this opportunity. Amen. And we have been in a series uh and I, it is kings and kingdoms, and it is very important. It has been working on me because what it does, it deals with our mindset, and it really has been a reset of my mind and how I think and how I see things and what I thought I knew and what I didn't know. And as a student, we should all be, as the body of Christ, we should continue to be students. We should continue to have a seat. There's, there's something so, so graceful to see somebody who is hunger and has a continual palate to learn and a palate to be taught. It is that, that's, that is needed in the body because once we get to a point that I got it, once, if we ever get to a point of where you think I got it, you'll lose it. If you ever get to the point of, I got it, you will lose it. But if you keep a posture of God, there is so much more, and there is, that we will be continuous students. But what I want to do, as the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me, is the topic of the standard. The topic of the standard here in the kingdom of God. Excuse me, could you all turn it off? Thank you. Uh, is the standard. And I said, God, okay, well, in the kingdom of God, you know, I have the mind of God. I understand, you know, there are different kingdoms and different things that we do. He said, but in order to operate fully in the kingdom of God, there must be, there's a thing called the standard. And it is important that we as believers, as children of God, that we allow our minds to be transformed and transitioned. And one of the ways to do that is to acquire the standard for our life. Amen. So if you could go with me uh, to the book of Isaiah chapter 59, the book of Isaiah chapter 59, and I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this morning. I thank you for this opportunity to be able to be used and to be a vessel for you to speak through. I count it a privilege, so therefore I humble myself 
so that the Holy Spirit can manifest and be the speaker today. These are your lips. This is my mind. These are your vocal cords. Everything about my being belongs to you at this very moment. And we yield our hearts to say, teach us, Holy Spirit. We want to be taught. We come before you, God, as children. And we want your word, we want your revelation and understanding. We understand what we have already been taught, but we say, teach us again. Give us more. We are waiting and we're willing. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, I'm going to read the entire chapter. Uh, I got into the chapter and I was like, okay, well, where can I read it? Where can I start? And there was no place that I felt arrest to say, oh, just pick up here. And I said, I got to do it in this entire context. So be patient. It's only 21 verses, but we're going to go ahead and read it through. The book of Isaiah, it is uh, chapter 59. I'm reading from the King James. It says, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, he's talking to the children of Israel, have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear you. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice, which is a type of uh, snake, eggs, and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not... Come, shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us, neither doth just, justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity, for brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We roar like all like bears, and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as our in in iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself pray. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness is sustained. His righteousness, it sustained him, for he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head, and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak according to their deeds. Accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, 
that the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart of, out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seeds, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith the Lord from henceforth and forever. Amen. At this time, the children of Israel are in a state of rebellion, um, as we can see uh, our current times people are in a state of rebellion. And the children of Israel are a representation of God's people, which represents the church. It's not just about a only a place. It is what it signifies. It is what it represents. And they're in a state of rebellion and they're rebelling against God. So therefore, God uh, is using the prophet Isaiah and he has actually been sent to speak to them to prophesy because you do know and realize that even in confusion or a state of rebellion, God will always raise up a prophet. I'm not talking about someone that, you, that you've already fixed in your mind and say, you know what, well, God's not speaking. No, God will raise up a man or woman of God, and they will speak even during times of confusion, even when the body doesn't want to hear it. Because Israel didn't want to hear it. Israel didn't want to hear it. And so he would send, count, he would send prophets countless to them, and he would speak to them, and he would, would, would bring correction to them. And they would still do what they want to do. But God is still speaking. Do you realize that God will still speak even when you're doing what you want to do? God is still speaking. So for those who are saying, you know what, well, I didn't hear God saying anything. Well, because you were too busy doing what you wanted to do. And when you're doing what you want to do, even though the word of God is speaking, and in the different forms that it may come in, you can't hear him until something gets your attention and during this time as he's speaking I, I, I looked at as I read the entirety of the context verse 15 caught my attention I said because he's now declaring hey this is what you're doing this is what's going on but in verse 15 God God is so compassionate because even in verse 15 he gets there he says yea truth faileth and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. What he's saying is that he who chooses to do right, he becomes a target. How is it that the person that chooses to do right, the person that chooses to stand in righteousness, the person that refrains, the person that says, no, 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 I see what everybody else is doing. And I will not participate. They become a target. Oh, we know what that looks like. If you choose and say, you know what, I know what everybody else is screaming, but I choose to stand on the side of the Lord. Well, it must be you not with us. Well, you know what, if I choose to honor and I choose to stay in a position, then you become a target. You know what, and I, something is wrong with you. The person who chooses to do right, they become prey. That's been going on all you have to do is read your bible he says that he himself become prey so God sees this it says and the Lord saw it I'm gonna say that again and the Lord saw it if we really if the if the body really was taken into consideration and the Lord saw it it would change how we behave and the Lord saw it it would change what you write. And the Lord saw it. It would change how you treat people. And the Lord saw it. See, what we think is just, I just want to make sure that everybody else saw it. I just want to make sure that I caught everybody else's attention. And I want to make sure that, you know what, I'm doing this secretly. And nobody understands. Nobody sees this. It doesn't, it's not a big deal. It's just between me and my friends. I'm here to tell you, church, and the Lord saw it. And when the Lord sees it, there's a paradigm shift in what goes on because it changes the very dynamic of this actual chapter. It says, and the Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no judgment. That there was no one saying enough is enough. That there was no one saying, no, come here, have a seat. That there was no one saying this is not pleasing to the Lord. That there was no one saying that. God is a God of all men, not just some men. That no one was saying that should not happen. He said it displeased him. So when you think that being quiet sometimes is, is the easy way out, and the Lord saw it. When someone is in a dishonorable conversation and you just say, well, I didn't say nothing. And, and, and the Lord saw it. He said that there was no, he said that there was no judgment. I'm not judging anybody. No, he's not talking about condemning someone to hell, that there was no one to come in and say that this is right. This is wrong. It displeased the Lord. He says, and he saw that there was no man, that there was no one, a representation. There was no leadership. 
Not a man as in, in physical. That there was no man because the man is what represents leadership. It can be male or female, but there was no man. There was no one coming in and walking in the authority to say, to proclaim what it is, the standard that God wants. He said that there was no man, uh uh-oh, uh-oh, and wondered, uh uh-oh, and wondered that there was no intercessor. He wondered, why isn't anybody really praying? I'm, I'm not talking about what you're putting on social media and saying that you are doing. Where are the prayer meetings? Where are the people who are wailing, who are crying out? Where are the people who don't need the attention, who don't need the lights? They're actually praying. Where are the innocents? It says that God wondered. Now, here's someone who knows everything. He made and created everything. And because there was no intercessor, it caused God to wonder. How many churches right now are God looking at and he's wondering? How in the world are you functioning? How in the world are you building? How in the world do you have an intercessory team and nobody's praying? How in the world do you have a pastor who's not even praying himself? How in the world? That's wonder. How do you have somebody who's in the position but not in authority? He said because there was not a man. Says, and he, he wondered. <laughs> said it, but it, it pleased him because here's somebody in this exact same verse who has been made a prey, who has been made a target. And no one is doing anything. Why? Because they're in a state of rebellion and everything goes and everybody can do anything. And they left God where he's wondering. And then in verse 16 it says, and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness sustained him it is very in the kingdom i want us to understand that the kingdom of god is governed by standards now i the the, a carnal mind may interpret that and this is what a a carnal mind i didn't say you weren't saved (laughs) <laughs> because you do realize that you can be saved and yet be carnal. And that, that's the thing that we're not touching that a lot of times it's not being addressing. I'm not going to hell. I'm not going to hell. No, but you can be going to heaven and still have a very carnal mind. Usually that's what is being fought in the church. It's not about salvation. People that come to the altar and they give their life to Christ. But usually where there's a fight within the body, because I'm talking to the body of Christ this morning, usually where the fight is, is carnality. And the children of Israel will go give their sacrifices. They knew about God. They knew how to sacrifice. They knew everything to do, but yet they were still carnal. So when a carnal mind hears the standard, usually how the carnal mind interprets that is they consider that control. (laughs) Rules. But we're going to talk about the standard. But a kingdom mind will interpret that as a key. Strategy. Access protection so go back to verse 19 it says when the enemy shall come in like a flood which is chaos trauma accusation confusion crisis attack the spirit of the lord shall lift up a standard against him which means protection he brings in order there's defense there's access and there's ability i want to discuss with you that there are a lot of things that we aren't experiencing as the body of christ not that because we aren't saved not because we don't have beautiful churches which right now are empty (laughs) so you got to be careful what you make your god Because there's no one to come in and say, you know what, have coffee and tea. You got to really have something in your belly because you're sitting at home right now. (laughs) We have, we, 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 we're in a state where right now where there are no standards and this is the body of Christ. And there are a lot of things that we aren't accessing because we don't have a standard. And the standard is not just, see, in, in this actual text, a lot of times, I've heard it preached, I've heard it taught before, and not to say that it was wrong. But when God comes in, they, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God is going to lift up a standard. And we usually only teach that from the place of when something happens to me. <laughs> when someone comes against me. When something uh, occurs that I had no control over and I'm being abused and all these things, God is going to lift up a standard. But God says that, you know what? He said the standard is already there. (laughs) He said a standard is not just about what I am um, actually keeping out. Lifting up a standard could be about what you need to get in. What you need to get in. And I want to turn your attention. You don't have to turn their work. No, you can the, 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 in the book of Psalm, 
this, I, 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 I did it. In the book of Psalm 119, has a hundred, there are 176 verses. I love the book of Psalm. And uh, verse 119, David says these words over and over. David says, thy ways, thy ordinances, thy words, thy word, thy judgments, thy law, thy testimonies. You know how many times he said it? I counted. I did. I counted. He says those words 176 times. Throughout the entire chapter, all he kept talking about, even when he would insert uh, in, in areas where something was happening to him or, you know, how he felt about something, he said, but thy ways and thy precepts, thy, thy testimonies. He would constantly talk about the testimony of God, the statutes of God, the precepts of God. And God said, do you know what that is? I say, no, what? He said, the standard. <laughs> even while you're going through something, God will lift up a standard. The Spirit of the Lord would lift up a standard, and he constantly talked about it. So why in the world would, da would David take 176 times to keep talking about his laws, his words, his testimonies, your statues, over and over and over and over again? Because it is important as a believer, as David was the king of praise, but he had to still live by a standard. The standard is what reels you in. The standard, not just because, listen, we can come out of praise and worship. We can come out of events and different things. But if there is no standard, that, listen, the standard is what you need Monday through Saturday. <laughs> you need the standard. Because when there is no praise team, when there is no band, you need the standard to remind you of why it is that you're living for God. It is the standard that reminds you of why I haven't cussed you out. It is the standard that reminds you of why I'm going to keep my hands to myself. It is the standard that says why I need to live and because, because God sees it. It is the standard. And that's why David kept going back. Oh, but it is your law and it's everything. I know my heart is broken, but your precepts and your testimony. He kept rehearsing over and over and over again again repeating a standard and my question today is where is your standard it is the standard that is needed to sustain it is the standard that is needed for growth usually where there's no growth check for a standard or the lack thereof let me help you write this down the standard was lifted not lowered <laughs> The standard was lifted. It says, when a standard is lifted, this is what the Lord gave me. He said, when a standard is lifted, it commands you choose. It commands you choose. Pull up for me, Joshua chapter 24, 15. You're going to read it differently. <laughs> Joshua chapter 24, verses 15 says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom you will serve. That's a standard. Whether the gods of which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In that one verse, two standards were mentioned. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. <laughs> Choose. Make a choice. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The only way that we can live, we have to live by a standard. The only way, when a standard comes in, a lot of times people consider it confrontation. You consider somebody confrontational and they ask you a question and they begin to deal with you. They're dealing with your motives. They're dealing with how you do things. And then once it happens, you start feeling all un un uncomfortable. I was, uh, because I, I, I like Ayanla, I like to, to watch the show. And a lot of times when she's confronting somebody, they get all itchy. Like, you know, I was like, man, this, this looks like some meetings that I have. They get all, uh, because when you do it, because what is happening, a standard. We like choices and you can choose how you want to choose we like all of these I, I need a variety what what can I, I can't do this I can't do this and this okay well what if I do a little bit of this and then some of this uh, oh wait wait a minute now I'm still uh, I'm still saved I didn't say you weren't saved 
First of all, can we get past the, the Bible talk, the very elementary things of salvation? Thank God for salvation. But can we get past the elementary things of salvation that is still because everything somebody uh, comes to you and, and discusses something with you, you always feel like somebody is challenging your salvation. This has nothing to do with your salvation. I'm dealing with your living. I'm dealing with your transformation, not your salvation. When a standard comes in, when a standard comes to you, it causes you, you have to choose. You mean to tell me Pastor Marcus couldn't date you and her? No. You know why? Because there's a standard. <laughs> now, I'm not saying he did it. I'm just making you all aware. <laughs> you over there tripping like, who is she? <laughs> you know why? Because there's a standard. And there's another hidden standard called Ray Ray. And she will come on the scene and enforce another standard. Wop up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But there's a standard. A standard causes you to say, no, you have to choose. When you find yourself in a very indecisive place constantly, not just, you know, here and there, because there may be times where you need to think some things over. Let me process this exactly what I need to do. Let me pray. But when you find yourself constantly in a, well, it can go either or, well, I kind of feel there is no standard. Because the standard says, choose ye this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, I don't know what you all are doing. I don't know how you do it in your place. I don't know how you raise your kids. I don't know what you allow your husband to do. I don't know what you think your, wherever your wife going. As for me and my house, I know that's what y'all do over there, but we ain't doing that over here. Standard. And when you live by standard, you're not intimidated when people have a problem with your standard. <laughs> You mean to tell me? No, I don't mean to tell you because I already told you. You just weren't listening. <laughs> no, we don't do that. Usually when someone doesn't live by the standard, they are easily offended. They are easily offended because in order to walk in a standard, you have to have conviction. Conviction cannot, uh, uh, conviction supports the standard because when there are daggers and accusation being constantly thrown at you about the standard, you got to be able to stand in and say, I know that's how you feel. I know that's what you feel. I know that's what they think. But there's a standard. And that is what God is raising at this time. The standard. The standard causes you to have to choose. No, you can't do bring them. You can't bring them. Oh, oof. This is for those who are discipling. No, you can't hang with them if you're going to walk this walk with me. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Now, cut it off. There's a standard. Well, you know, I'm just working my way into this. No, 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 no. Choose right here at the door. Because in order for you to get what I got, you got to lay down what you're thinking and your understanding. No, you got to make a choice. I am not a buffet. No, the wisdom of God that is inside of me does not come with all these choices and all these things that you feel like you get to do. First of all, you came to me. So obviously you think that I have something that you need. Why all of a sudden is all of this, all this, 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 these multiple choices and everything that you want to get to do? We're so afraid as people of God. First of all, you know what? We're not even peculiar anymore. You know why? Because there's no standard. Because when, when you're peculiar, there's certain things that you can see. There's certain things that it behaves, how it acts, what it does. It's regimen. It's discipline. We're not even peculiar anymore. We're common. You can get that anywhere. Well, you know, so-and-so, you know, she's been offering a mentor to me. Well, go to her. I come with a standard. If you want what's on here, it comes with a standard. You can go over there with her, see what she got. <laughs> she ain't got this. That has nothing to do with arrogance. Because, see, when you see somebody who has a standard, they're considered to be arrogant. It is a confidence that has been pressed out in me because of what I know that God has inside of me. It is not arrogance. You know, they just acting like that. No, no, no. This is a surrendered and a submitted life. There's a sta Listen, there is a standard that I have to keep up with. Yo, leader, don't you, listen, don't you sit up under any leader who doesn't have a standard. No pastor should be pastoring and over anybody and you have no standard. You have no standard for your own personal life. 
Because what happens is that you become a weight on everybody else. And I want you to do it. And I want you to do it. And I want you to do it. But I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to put the weight on you to do it. But I don't have to live like that. I don't have to be responsible like that. But a standard is applicable to everyone. Everybody can get it. <laughs> there has to be a standard. And then the areas where we need a standard, I'm just going to go over a few areas. First area is financially. Financially, there must be a standard. You may see people who, who have uh, accumulated money, and I'm not, I know that there are different ways that people have accumulated money and have, have received money. I'm not, talk, I'm not talking about Eva. I mean, for people who are really actually living there, their finances are in order. Guess what that came with? A standard. So instead of being um, envious of someone, why don't you ask them, what are the standards for their life? What are the choices that they're choosing to get what they got to accumulate, to have, to save? How is it that you're not in debt? Like, what, like what did you do? There's a discipline that they were able to refrain and say, nope, I'm good. I need this. I can get what I want, but this will be in order. In order to have, there's a standard in, uh, in our finances, Oh, let me help you. Oh, this is probably going to mess some of you all up. Sometimes at the church, because see, that's how you go religious with it. You think the standard to, to only get you out of debt, and God can sit because his word is true. You think that uh, the standard is, is strictly tithe and offering. <laughs> oh, that is a part of it. <laughs> First of all, as, as Pastor Marcus said, the tithe belongs to the Lord anyway. And then he chooses to rebuke the devourer. It is about protection. It is my assurance. God, take this. This is yours. But you can give all day. But if there, are, there isn't a discipline, there's no standard how you handle your money, you'll be mad at God and the church. Tell me, I gave the pastor all my money. He went on vacation. No, baby, I did what I was supposed to do. What were you doing with your finances? Oh, there was no standard because so-and-so needed it. And, and, I had to, and, you know, I just had to get that. Look, when I go buy shoes, I do it guilt-free. I skip all the way there. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Lights paid. Everything's in order. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Ta-da. And I leave with my box, and I'm just as fancy free. Why? Because the standard is already in order. And my man, no, I ain't have to hide these shoes. What? <laughs> I really stepped in. <laughs> but you don't have no standard, so you got to be sneaking boxes and doing all of that. And, and you wearing these guilty shoes. You're like, man, I hope you don't see. Let me change. I'm sure. There's no standard. You got on guilty shoes. <laughs> Really? Guilty shoes. There's no standard financially. So instead, while, instead of being, you know, uh, in your heart towards somebody that, is, that has things taken care of in order, why don't you sit down next to them and humble yourself and say, will you teach me the standard of how to handle your finances? I understand why some people have what they have because I know there's a standard. I know that there are things that they've put in place, things that they put in order. Not to say that they've always had it in order and they've always done things well, but they knew how to auto-correct and they say, no, nope, let me line up, let me get this in order, let me put this in place, and this is the way that I'm going. And I understand why they're getting the results that they're getting. Why? Because a standard came in their money and they started blowing it up. Listen, God will come in and blow it up like, I, I, I know what I make, but how did it get like this? Because when you introduce a standard, a standard is a magnifier. A standard, it, it, it expands. But if you always just put it in everywhere, I don't know. Well, how much do you have? Well, I don't know. No, no. Give me exact numbers. This has nothing to be with no, being nosy. What are the exact numbers? You know why? Because I'm trying to help you put in a standard. And if you don't know, where can the standard rest? If you don't know how much debt you're in, how can the standard come in and be lifted and say, God, deal with this? You have to have a standard. Next part is relationally. Oh, this is where it gets people right here. Relationally, there are no standards. I see and understand why some people keep getting in the same cycles over and over and over again. You have no standard. You're afraid to say no. Right now, you're looking at this message, and you're offended. No, you're afraid to say, no, you don't have a standard. But when you have a standard, you're confident in the Lord Jesus Christ and the righteousness that he gave you. You can have a full-fledged no. You don't have to allow people to take advantage of you. Usually people who are, I call them 
and I've been getting more revelation of this. Validation addicts started showing me how there were literally like two different types that I personally have witnessed. You have the validation addict that they are over. They do everything. They want it to be open. They want everybody to see, I could do this for you. I could do that for you. Oh, yeah, I got whatever, whatever. No, I'm not talking about help. I'm not talking about serving it because that's different. Because you know what makes a difference? The spirit that is done in. So I can tell when somebody wants to help because it's their spirit that they do it in. But you have to be discerning to see that. They want to do everything. They want to see. And, but really, they're validation addicts. And the other validation addict is the one that they're, they're more covert. They're more covert. They sit back because they're not out, you know, well, I do this, I do that. They seem to appear to be the most quiet person in the room, the most docile person in the room. But they're actually validation addicts. You know how I know that they're validation addicts? Because of who they connect with. Because over and over, how is it that you keep getting caught up with this person? You're a validation addict. So you keep getting caught up with people that you're afraid of them rejecting you. So you want them over, and I hang with this person, and now I'm with this person, and now I'm with this person. No, I'm not offering a whole lot of help because I don't want attention to myself because I'm insecure. And I don't want to mess it up in front of everybody, but what I do is because I'm such a validation addict, I'll sit back and anything that comes along, I'll attach myself to it. And then that person comes along and then I attach myself to it. You want me? You'll help me? Oh, thank you. And especially what they attract is other validation addict because they really attract the validation addict, the one that's over, that one that, does, that does everything. They come in and then they strong arm them and they're so needy. They say, oh, you'll help me? you like me? Okay, guess what? I'll let you do everything. And they come in and they tell the, the overt validation addict, tells the covert validation addict, I'll help you I do anything for you whatever you need why and the reason why they operate because there is no standard and that's how they operate they're constantly there are no rules and when any person any situation comes in and addresses it they become accusatory relationally constantly why are you why are you with them why are you hanging out with them? You don't let them talk to you like that. There's no standard. You're con- you're con- if you constantly find yourself with the same type of unhealthy relationships that do not benefit, not only just benefit you. I'm not talking about that. That don't please God. Because see, that's the point. We got a lot of relationships that please us. I know a lot of people who are involved in stuff. It pleased you. That's how you got hooked up with her. That's how you got hooked up with him. Matter of fact, that's how you don't loop back around and got back with them. Because it really pleases you. We, if we're going to talk about it, let's talk about it. I'm not talking about being on, on the surface free. I'm talking about you don't know when you have a standard because it really shows up in your private behavior. I'm not talking about what everybody can see. What you do privately, when a standard is in place, it speaks to your private life. Why? Because as it said back in uh, Isaiah 59, it says, and God saw it. When you have a standard, you'll understand. And God saw it. Oh, God saw that I hooked back up with this person. God saw that I'm still dealing with this person. God sees that I'm sleeping in this bed and this is not my spouse. God sees all. God sees it. I have a standard. Well, you acting funny. You know, you was, you was with it last week. No, no, no. Something on the inside of me has, has shaken. There's a, a standard being raised up in me. A standard has to be lifted. And when we are in a very highly emotional place, we usually look for people to lower it. It don't take all that. Pastor Marcus and I were talking the other day, just this week. And somebody, they don't, they don't go to the church anymore. And, you know, it's of no consequence to me anyway. Uh, they said, uh, they, there was somebody who was, who was going here and they told them, she said, well, why are you left? And the, the statement that the person made is, they expect you to live holy over there. It was supposed to be an insult. <laughs> when did holiness become an insult? You know why? Because we have carnal Christians. You know why? Because there is no standard. When did not sleeping around become, when did that become, uh, I can't know, just holy. They expect you to live holy. They expect you can't do nothing over there. Because there are a lot of people who are church hopping because they're looking for a place where there is no standard. I'm not, listen, I'm not impressed by numbers, 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 numbers. And I'm not saying that God can't be there for a lot of people. But usually you have people who go from place to place, relationship to relationship, pastor to pastor. is because they're looking for somewhere to be where there is no standard. So next time somebody roll up on you and want to be your friend, why are you talking to me? Who's the last person you, oh, you trying to find somewhere where there is no standard. You, you got the wrong person. As a matter of fact, you need to ask yourself, why are they, why have I attracted this person? 
I see their behavior because this is, this is sometimes as a body of Christ, it's what we do. Well, that's just them. If you are rolling with me, I'm not, because this ain't about nobody. I'll use myself as an example. If you are rolling with me in my personal circle, yes, you have to have a standard. Does that have anything to do with I don't love you and I don't appreciate you and you're an individual? Great, but there's a standard that we operate and that we live by. You cannot get access, that much access to me and not have no standard and just say, you know what, that's just the way they are. No, there is something in you that has lowered the standard that a person who is living like that feels so comfortable. How can a per- oh my God, how can a person be in a state of dishonor and you, they feel so comfortable hanging around you? How can it be that the person can't stand your pastor, but you know what, they're your bestie? I, no, 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 we ain't doing that. How? 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 Where's the standard? There has to be something in us that says it's okay. Well, you know that, that, that you know I'll go so far. What we're trying to do is say, God, could you, could you just lower this a little bit? I really want to go. Uh, I don't want nobody to be mad at me if I don't show up tonight. Will you? <laughs> Please, Lord, a standard for me. Oh, I know it's a call on my life, but mm, everybody's looking, God. Could you please lower it? You know what? It, can I just lower it for tonight? Because if not, he won't be my boyfriend. Please. Oh, I know he gonna, they going to call me church girl. Oh, could you please? Where are we? No standard. The next place, Physically. Oh, this is why I lose everybody. Because you know, Pastor Rachel, it's Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving. Why are you talking about physical? I'm talking to the body of Christ. There's no standard for us physically. This is no jab. Could we please get up? Listen, <laughs> I got, when I went in my pants, I said, ooh, oh, what, what, what's that? Oh, I discovered something. Oh, a little something over here. A little something over there. Oh, where's my standard? I lowered the standard. You lower the standard, you get more weight. <laughs> I'm going to use myself for an example. Standard physically. We have to hold each other accountable physically. The body of Christ, what's going on with you? The world has taught us to be, what is it, to be in- Inclusive. Well, you know, everybody, you know, you know, we don't want anybody to feel rejected. You don't want, yeah, yeah, tolerance. Thank, thank you, minister. They, we, we, we don't want anybody. And that's not about rejecting anybody. But I want to get you, and I want to grab you, and I say that there can be better for you. Because I love you. So whatever we got to do, if we're going for walks, then let's go for a walk. If we need to go and we're just drinking water, we need to drink water. Don't just, listen, don't just see the person looking bad and you don't say nothing to them. And don't be offended if the person says something to you. That. What you trying to say? What I just said? You looking kind of thick. It's all around here. All around your neck area. You weren't like that last week. <laughs> I don't know what you. I don't know what you in hell. But you looking kind of thick around here. You know. Tighten it up. <laughs> Where's the standard? The body, the body of Christ, no standard. And, and we want to wipe everything. God is a healer. God is, he is the God that healeth thee. But can he heal us through nutrition? Can he heal us through discipline? Can he heal us from emotional eating? Can he heal us from the way that our, our family, just because your family just cooks and does all that. I know I'm offending somebody right now because your mama cooked it this week, and I'm telling you, it's killing you. Just because they cooked it and they, they smoked it and they did all that to it and dressed it up and put pineapples on it and all of that, it's still unhealthy. And you all clogged up. And now we want to come and we say, God, bread away, heal us, heal us, Jesus, Jesus. I don't know where that song coming from, but God, that's what I imagine. God made a way, heal us, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Work it out. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Heal us. Dun, 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 dun. He's a healer. He's a healer. He's a he, 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 he. Stop eating. And then you go home and you gorge yourself with no standard. And then you come back. To the altar saying, God, heal me, heal me, heal me. He's a healer. Stop. No standard. 
I like to enjoy things every now and then. Man, I was enjoying stuff. But they have to have a standard where the Lord has said, where's the standard for you to stop? Ooh. And then I pick it up. I'm like, oh. when you going to stop? Until you get that conviction, even if you have a workout partner, until you get that conviction on your own, you won't stop. You will not stop. Have a standard to the body of Christ. I know you prayed over it. They don't make the, the, the calories don't go get smaller just because you say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, you know, we bless this food and we thank you for this food and, and we love the hog mogs and, and we thank you for, for chitlins and, and ch- we thank you, Lord. Lord, is we just going to eat it and we know we're going to eat too much, but we want to tell you thank you. Thank you for making us unhealthy. Thank you, Lord, for, for, for clogging our arteries. Thank you, Lord, that we're breaking out in rashes, but we don't care, God. You know, we can take a pill later and, and uh, thank you, Lord, that we hooked on all types of medication but we're gonna eat it anyway thank you that's really what your prayer sound like amen yeah so <laughs> think about that when you go back home to those leftovers <laughs> you know i think i'm just have a sandwich <laughs> i'm not saying that you can't have something that you can't treat that's not what i'm saying But where's the standard? Where's the standard to say, I want to live for God, but I got to have the body to do it. I want to live for God, but I need the momentum. I need the stamina. I'm getting winded. the, The most sobering conversation, one of the most sobering conversations that I have had regarding weight actually was with Brandolin. And when Brandilyn was dealing with her, uh, for those who don't know Brandilyn, Brandilyn is our administrator here at the church. And when she was dealing with her, her weight, and when I talked to her, it, it was very sobering to hear her talk about herself. Oh, my gosh. It was sobering to hear her talk about her own body and what she was tired of. It was very sobering to hear how she understood and came to a place to confront this is emotional this is why I do this this is why I pick this up and I've gotten to this point and I'm done with it there had to be a standard and there had to be a standard not only to go through the process of getting of shedding the weight but it has to be a standard to maintain because you can say I'm lifting up a standard I'm making a change but as soon as you know go a couple of days a couple of months there's no standard to stand against Laura oh because you know I'm going to hang out with friends this week you know I'm going to do this you know I owe it to myself how is it that you've been doing so good and now you owe yourself to pig out quiet but when you have a standard a standard you know what a standard is a standard brings consistency A standard is consistent. When people are high and low, up and down, a standard will cause you to be consistent. When you see somebody who is continuously inconsistent, there is no standard. Emotionally, where's the standard for your emotions? No, ladies, I do not get to blame me going off on my husband because I'm on my cycle. (laughs) <laughs> amen somebody believe it <laughs> I don't get to go there am I feeling something is my body going through that I know the brothers are like you know like okay Pastor Rachel you know like I'm not on my cycle but you know okay but no see I don't get to I don't I may understand and recognize that something is about to happen but I don't get to use that to disrespect to be nasty and mean and this is just the way I'm feeling no 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 you let, trust me ladies you already know when your body's shifting you feel a change let me go my husband I already know what time he's like what you need me to go get you you know because I, I need peace what well, I run to the store I, I got you <laughs> he got it. He, he goes to the store. Look, he proud too. He, he go in there. He put everything on the counter. He ain't even shamed. <laughs> Single brother like, dude, whatever. But seriously, emotionally, where's your standard? Why is it that then when something happens, you give excuses to completely fall apart? There's a standard reels you in. I'm just having an emotional day. You just don't understand. Is it these kids and, and this is what is going on? And there may be, and that just doesn't apply to women. Men too. Men too. What's the standard for how you deal with your emotions when somebody upsets you? 
What is your standard when, when somebody uh, cuts you off or, or, you feel, or you feel disrespected? Where's the standard that governs that? Where's the standard for how you behave and how you operate, especially if you're the priest of your home? Where's the standard? Where's the standard on how you talk to your wife? Where, where, does it depend on, you know, on where she is? Because you know where, where it is. You know, wherever she go, that's where I'm going to go. Or I get to check out. And I don't have to say anything. Where's the standard to say, no, I will continue to be present and in the moment in my house? There has to be a standard for us emotionally. Why? Because when our emotions begin to drive, when our emotions begin to take over, they are the ones that's driving. And therefore, we have no more control over what we do and what we say. Where's the standard emotionally? Where's the standard for you not to just say, I just don't care anymore. And I just, you know, I'm just upset. And I'm, my feelings are, oh, no, my feelings are so hurt. And I don't understand how they were talking to me. I don't just feel so unappreciated. Where's the standard? What stabilizes you? What stabilizes you to say, get back in place? There has to be, the Lord says the Spirit of the Lord lifts a standard, not lowers a standard. So you don't get this excuse. There could be things that are painful, but even then, you have to make a decision to say, this is what I'm going, I need to step out. I want to go and scream, go and scream. But at this very moment, I am feeling highly my emotions. I'm in a place, where can I do it? Go that way. Even in your most dire place of hurt and pain or trauma, there must be a standard that gets lifted up your head. Or there should be people around you who have a standard that can say, right now you are very weak. Then I'm going to help you at this time because you are so emotionally unstable. Why? Because I got a standard that can carry you. I have a standard that can cover you. I see why some of your friends have fallen off because you don't even have a standard within you to help reel them in. And they got to check out and do whatever they want to do. Where is the standard being lifted? Even in that heartbreak, where's the standard? Mentally. Mentally. Where's your mind? Where are your thoughts? The Bible is constantly telling us how to meditate on whatever is lovely, whatever is pure. Let this mind, this mind, this mind of who? This mind of Christ. What does that represent? It represents a standard. The mind of Christ represents a, a standard. My, my thinking is up. My thinking is stable. I am consistent in my thoughts. I know who I am and who's I am. Mentally, I don't meditate over and over on how people don't like me. I don't meditate or, or who's going to reject me. I don't meditate and worry on what I can't control and what other people are doing in their lives. I don't meditate that. Why? Because I've lifted up a standard in my mind that says that my mind, my mind will be stayed on thee. I will trust you. I have a mental, I've made a, a mental note. I have a mental sticky that says, that my thoughts are aligned with God's. Where's your mental? Are you, are you in a place of, of breakdown? Are you in a place where you're feeling overwhelmed mentally? It can happen. But I ask you, I, I challenge you to say, where's the standard? Before the mental breakdown, where are the standards that you have overlooked? Standards are a protector. They insulate. They help when there's a standard. It's not controlled. It is a safety net. It is the cushion in the padded room. <laughs> you need the standard of your mind. Why, where are your thoughts going? No, I pull it down. I, I bring them into the captivity, into the obedience of Christ. Where, where's the standard? How do you apply the word of God to your thoughts? Do you allow it? I couldn't help what I was thinking. No, every day I pull it down. That came to my mind, the standard, oh, no, I have the mind of Christ. I pull it. No, that's, I, I see that's what they did. And no, I will not take, I will not allow that thought to be meditated. So it grabs my heart. So therefore I'm in a state of vengeance. No, I pull it down. Where are you mentally? Where's the standard? Spiritually. Where's your standard? Where's your standard? It said, you know what, this, it's, it's for somebody else. They just have an anointing on their life. They could do whatever. It just said, God only talks to them. I, I challenge you, where's your standard for prayer? Where's your, where's your standard for fasting? Where's, where, where's your standard for spending time and being alone with God? And do you read your word? <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of a struggle. No, it's not a struggle. What it is that you haven't lifted up a standard. I eat the word. I meditate on the word. This is what I live by. This is, my, this is my daily bread. Before I pick up a sandwich, I'm picking up the word. I need to eat. You eat every day. Why? Because you made a standard for yourself. This is why I got to eat. That's what they say. I got to eat. I got to read. 
I got to focus. I got to get my spiritual nutrition that I'm being built up. Where is the standard that we, are, that we are living by? We as the believers, we are struggling. We, are, we have things that we are being tormented by. You know why? Because there is no standard. Listen, torment will be present where there is no standard. Ignorance will plague a people or family where there's no standard. Have you ever looked at a family and you see constantly, I can see it in your mom, I can see it in the daughter, I can see it in this person, I can see it in the father. You know why? No standard. Check the home. I didn't ask you, we're all close, we just love each other. No, when I see constant stuff going on through a family, no one came in with a standard to break it. No, what's the person saying? I lift up a standard. I lift up the standard and say, no, that is not what I do. I don't care if that is how you did it, Ma. I'm not doing it like that. I don't care if that's, Dad, if that's what you did, I love you. I, I, I honor you. But I'm lifting up a standard. As for me and my house, we're not taking part in that. A standard will, will break cycles and generational cycles. A standard being lifted. It is important because it, 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 it perpetuates ignorance. I don't have to know. And guess what? I don't want to know. When there's no standard, because when there's no standard, you feel like you don't have to be responsible or accountable. But a standard will hold you accountable. So I want to talk, I want to tell you today, lift up the standard. Lift up the standard in, in how you deal with people relationally. Lift up the standard in how we deal with our bodies physically. Lift up the standard in, in what you operate in. When a standard is lifted, Lord, show me this. He said, when you don't have a standard, he said, there will be arenas, there will be environments that you will not have access to. That's what he was telling me. I was like, but God, your favor. You know, I know you favored me. He said, I have favored you. I mean, I, I, I chose you. I want to bestow this upon you. But there's some standards that you got to put into place. So therefore, you can't have access to that environment until you get a standard. Instead of being mad with, why can't I hang out with certain people? Why they won't be my friends? Some of you don't have a standard. There are some circles. It requires a standard to be in. And instead, and we become more offended by it, saying we should just accept it all to the church. Everybody, the church is for everybody, and it is. Well, I don't understand why it seems like nobody wants to be around me. They don't want to hang around me. Where's your standard? There are standards that keep this circle. There are standards that I live by. There are standards that govern me. Where's your standard? So instead of attacking the person and saying that they're acting bougie, or they're being super deep, or they're a click. Now, I do realize that there are some people that, that do operate like a clique. You know, it's this elite club. But now that I have more understanding of Revelation, I do understand why some people can't interact with certain people because there are no standards. And because that group of people have a standard or that person has a standard by which they live, it actually competes. It, 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 it repels. That's why you feel like it's a force because there's no standard. And what you're wanting is, someone needs to hear this. There's somebody that you're absolutely offended by or upset and say, well, I don't understand why they won't accept me, why they won't hang around me. Could you please check and see, where's the standard in your life? Are you asking for someone to lower something for you to come in instead of saying, Holy Spirit, help me so I can come up, so I can be trusted? There are certain people that God, ah, oh, thank you. There are certain people that God would not give you access to because you can't be trusted with them because you don't have a standard. There are certain arenas that I know God will not allow me. It is actually for my protection until I get a standard because there are some people that operate there's a, there's a standard. It's nothing against me. They don't think they're better. They just have a standard. So to operate in that group, I got to come up. To obtain that job, I need to come up. To have access to business savvy and circles, I need to come up. Where's the standard? Where's the standard for your money? 
constantly in debt and going through circles, where's the standard for your money? Where's the standard for your body? Recycling friends over and over? And you end up some, and some of you end up going back to people that you know you shouldn't be with. You know why when I see that? You have no standard. You afraid to tell people no and to stand on your own in the righteousness of God that he has created you to be? That's my timer. <laughs> standard. Where's your standard today? When you have a standard, sometimes you will stand alone in the natural. But there be more with me <laughs> than he that is in the world. You know why? There's a standard that is standing behind me. A standard keeps you. A standard keeps you from being overly concerned with what people think of you. A standard keeps you from being so easily offended. A standard keeps you from finding yourself in cycles, broken cycles over and over again. Where is the standard? Stand to your feet. So Father, we want to come up to a standard today. I don't want to just be low and say, God, look at little old me, look at little old me, I'm nobody. And time out for that, church. God, he sent Jesus and he died for something precious. So we're not worthless. You're not worthless. You just need to come up to a standard. Come up to a standard in your thinking. Come up to a standard in your worship. Come up to a standard in how your stewardship. I'm a steward everything that God has given me the power to steward up. I'm going to make sure that it's taken care of, that it's in order. My home, no matter how small it is, is going to have a standard. No matter where it is, I'm going to bring it up to a standard. Stop asking for more if you haven't taken care of what you already have. I will be a good steward. Why? Because I'm living by standard. And when I take care of that, okay, God, I can step up the more now. Why? Because I have a standard. I don't have to just accept anything. I don't have to be in fear. For those who are operating in fear, you are tormented by fear. Lift up a standard. Lift up a standard. If you're afraid of being rejected, if you're afraid of being talked about, lift up a standard. Where's your standard? Where's your standard? So lift your hands. Lift up a standard. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the standard being raised. That even when the enemy comes in like a flood, it says that you, the Spirit of the Lord, we lift up a standard. A standard repels and a standard allows us to have access and to remain and have dominion. Thank you for the standard today, Father. Show us, Holy Spirit, in every area where we have lowered the standard. Show us, Holy Spirit, in areas where we have no standard. We will not rebel. We will not fuss. We will not argue. We will not become offended. We will say, Lord, we will rise to the occasion of your standard in every area of our life, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially be a standard lifted so as they begin to sing I want you to begin to meditate on the areas where you want God to lift up a standard will you all sing that go ahead begin to minister that who don't know Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. God loves you. Yes, he does. He loves you flaws and all. But even he requires a standard. Pass all your flaws. And 
how you feel that you should just love me, he still requires that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. God still has a standard to enter into heaven. And it's called salvation. And if you have not accepted the standard of salvation to receive Jesus Christ into your heart, this is your opportunity right now to make him your savior. And if that is you, I just want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. And I accept you right now into my heart. And I thank you for saving me. I believe that you are Lord. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were resurrected from the dead. And I believe that you now sit at the right hand of the Father. And you pray for me. <laughs> and you're cheering for me. And I believe that the angels are rejoicing right now as I give you my heart. If you have prayed that prayer and have accepted him, we're going to glorify God right now for every soul that was saved in the name of Jesus. We bless you right now. Come on, people of God. Somebody has given their life to Christ today. They have accepted the standard. So right now, Pastor, do you have anything else? And if you have accepted Christ into your life, if you will please go on to our website, if you will go to this web address at saved, S-A-V-E-D, at worldchampions.org. Email saved at worldchampions.org. If you would just give us our, your information and say, hey, I've accepted Christ into my life. That we, if you, if you are backsliding, you say, you know what, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. That is for you, saved, S-A-V-E-D, at worldchampions.org. And we will connect with you to make sure that we help walk you through that process. Amen. Does anyone have anything else? Anyone have anything else? So again, we thank God for you all today. We're lifting up a standard, amen? We're ending the year with a standard. We're beginning the year with a standard. And your family's going to create a standard. And even if it's a place where you know that you didn't have a standard, I bind right now every spirit of condemnation that will have you say, well, you know, I feel so bad. I just might as well keep it on. If it's a relationship and you know it's no standard, stop. So where you're managing money, and get somebody to come in, stop. If you know the way that you operate relationally is out of order, no, let me get in and get help so I can get a standard. I don't know what the standard is. That's when you have to humble yourself to help somebody teach you. Could you help? I, I don't know. I'm not embarrassed. I don't know. Ask for help. Get the standard. That's not control. That's not legalism. That's kingdom. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the standard today. We thank you for every standard that is being lifted in our lives, that we will come up to the plate. We will rise to the occasion for the standard. We're no longer looking for ways to get out and get under. No, we're looking for the standard because we are your children. We are your people. And we thank you for the standard. The standard that redeems, the standard that heals, the standard that brings wisdom, the standard that brings peace, the standard that brings order, the standard that brings protection. Thank you for the standard. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You have an awesome day. Enjoy your week. I will lift up the standard.